Hi everybody, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm Rita Hickman, I'm a body mind expert and shiatsu massage therapist in Northern Illinois. And my specialty is using Asian medicine and other traditional medicines, uh, body work, uh, Irish medicine, uh, North Native American, South Native American, all of those things to help women uh, get their life back in order to feel great, to get their body feeling better, to get their mind to clear, to get rid of the symptoms of stress. Hey, Cynthia. And uh, that's, what I, that's what I'm completely passionate about. And uh, I'll tell you why. I'll give you a little bit of story from my life so you kind of know where I was coming from. You know, when I was in junior high, I was in a tremendous amount of stress. Of course, hormones and all of those other things. But, um, up until that time, I had never had uh, anybody, hey Ronnie, I'd never had anybody that I'd had a really close connection to. And so I like to tell people that I was kind of raised by wolves because I had to uh, figure things out for myself. And when kids don't have really great guidance, they come up with all sorts of things which are real, very real, which are happening, and interpretations of what are happening and, and things along those lines. And so junior high and high school and all those teen years can be some of the most stressful times of your life. And so for me, um, hey, Anne, how great to see you. And Kathy's here too, awesome. So those years can be some of the most stressful times of your life. And, and for me, they really were. And um, I was taught or I believed that no matter how I felt, I had to power through it. I had to ignore it. Um, because it would just be too big and too overwhelming for me to feel. So I got really resilient. I was super, super good at powering through things. Uh, but there were a lot of negative side effects. Um, I was somebody who jumped, you know, at the slightest sound all the time. Um, I would pee myself you know, in the middle of everybody else because I'd get so nervous and so scared. Hey, Margie, good to see you. I was constantly um, in a high anxiety level and I was very busy always distracting myself with things in order to keep myself from feeling what I was feeling. Because I believed at that time that uh, if I sat down and I opened that box, I would never get out of the anxiety and the depression and, the, and all of it. And so instead what I did is I found, you know, uh, good coping skills for kids which allowed me to disassociate from what I was feeling and not feel it. Now, not as many people, you know, a lot of people did not go through trauma as kids or, you know, maybe they did. And they developed these lifelong patterns of ignoring and betraying their body, of pretending that what they're feeling isn't really happening. They disassociate. And when we do that, um, our body starts to not trust us and it starts to take care of itself. Hey Deb, um, it starts to take care of itself and that's when our nervous system becomes super sensitive to everything around us because we aren't going to make good choices for how we feel in our body. Um, our body feels it needs to take care of itself. Now here's the deal, our body is brilliant but it's not our intellectual mind. And so it runs on um, an awareness and a sensitivity that's very physical, that's not intellectual. And we try to make most of our choices based on our intellect, based on our reason and our rationality and our problem solving. And we use that in order to uh, get us to, to succeed until our body starts to uh, wear down. Our body can't handle having to be the one that protects itself. And uh, when we don't take the time to listen to what's going on, it, um, it builds up and it gets worse and we become more sensitive and the, and the breach of trust between our mind and our body becomes bigger and we end up very, very conflicted inside. So many times the amount of stress that we're feeling isn't necessarily relevant to what's going on outside of us. The amount of stress we're feeling is that super huge conflict. Hey, Ro, that super huge conflict between what we're thinking and what we're feeling. And when we don't take the time to listen to and feel 
Whatever our reactions are, our hurt, our anger, our irritation, or frustration, when we don't allow ourselves time to be present with that, then um, those emotion chemicals keep building up. That uh, breach of trust gets bigger. Our nervous system becomes more sensitive. We become angrier easier. We become frustrated and overwhelmed easier until we just start to shut down and our life starts to spiral down. Partially because we make bad coping choices by picking fights with the people that we love or uh, overeating or turning to alcohol or drugs or pharmaceuticals or overworking or whatever it is. And our life starts to become more difficult. And so we used to be highly successful, really smart, funny, interesting women, but now we end up feeling overwhelmed. So one of the neat things that I got from theater, thank you, Deb Williamson, is uh, I got into theater in high school. And, uh, and then uh, music in college, high school and college, and singing, and then more theater after high school for a while. And Deb Williamson was uh, my director producer for that af after high school time. And one of the beautiful things about theater was that it gave you a structure and a safe place to feel all the things that you needed to feel, to become different characters and different personalities, even the ones that you might have judged. You know, the evil person, the nice person, the angry person. I had a show every year. I was Mrs. Cratchit in Christmas Carol. And so every year I got to have this big blow up. It was great. It allowed me to actually have a safe place that was appreciated. Hey, Seema, and enjoyed where I could move this energy, where I could be present with it. So a lot of people think that meditation is where you sit down and you imagine a candle or um, you clear your mind of all thought. And that is one form of meditation, and that can be very helpful. But when you've got a lifetime of not listening to um, what your body has to say, then you need a different kind of meditation. And that's why when most people try to sit down and meditate, their mind doesn't shut off. Hey, Lisa, their mind doesn't quit. It just keeps running. And they try to, you know, picture the candle. Hey, Martin, they try to picture you know, something that's, that's calming and it doesn't work. They get fidgety. They get agitated. You have to get up and do something. You can't get your to-do list off of your mind. And you have to work very hard in order to meditate and quiet down. So I'm going to suggest to you a different way of meditating that will help you deal with your stress, specifically deal with your stress. And it doesn't require clearing your mind. What it does require is you starting to have a dialogue with what your body is telling you. Now, many, many, many years ago, Louise Hay came out with the book about uh, what your body is saying to you. Hey, Gail. And that's a good book, but it's also a very intellectual book. It's a book about, oh, if your knee hurts, this is the problem and this is the affirmation that you say in order to make it feel better. Okay, that's, that's helpful. And that really is helpful and it gives you a lot of direction. But in reality... The first step you need to have is your body needs to finally be heard. Now, we're always worried that if we listen to our body, if we start listening to it, it's going to tell us things that we don't want to hear. And that is absolutely true. Because our body is working, not working on that intellectual sense. Our body is working on a felt sense. It's working on uh, information that is highly sensitized, but not intellectually evolved just like a child is. So our body is very similar to a child, very similar to a non-intellectual but very feeling being. And so when we start listening to our body, when we start having a dialogue and actually talking to it, how do you feel today? What's going on? What do you have to say? And it starts telling you things like, I'm sad for 45 minutes. You know, we get very judgy and judgmental. I remember when I first got into counseling, they told me, well, you should journal. And I would try journaling. But then all I would journal was how angry I was. <laughs> That's it. All I wanted to write. I didn't have these complex sentences. All I wanted to write is I'm angry, 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 angry for pages and pages because I was so stressed out because I had pushed my feelings aside, how I felt, my body aside for so long that all it had to say was that I'm angry or I'm hurt or I'm sad. 
Now, one of the reasons we don't open those doors and listen to our body is we think this is how we're going to feel for forever, that this is it. This is how we really feel. This is, this is what's going on. And let me tell you something. When your body starts to be able to say what it feels, I'm sad for 45 minutes or an hour and a half or, or four hours, when it starts to say I'm angry, it moves the energy and it starts to feel better. Every time I get to get angry in a play, I felt better afterwards because my body had the opportunity to be heard and expressed. So when you meditate, you don't have to shut off your mind, especially if you're doing it for, for stress, if you're in that place. Instead, what you want to do is change what you're thinking of to having a dialogue. Let's say your knee hurts, and your knee hurts, and you say to your knee, hey, what's going on? And it starts saying to you, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. And it doesn't say anything but how much it hurts. Thank you. <laughs> Deb says, my Mrs. Cratchit and all of my other characters were strong, smart, funny, and loving, just like me. Thank you, Deb. Thank you very much. So, you know, let's say your, your knee is hurting and you just want to sit there and uh, it just wants to tell you how bad it hurts. Guess what? If you listen to it for a while, it starts to dial down. And then it starts to tell you more of the message. It starts to tell you, um, I hurt because I'm dehydrated. I hurt because you stepped wrong yesterday. I hurt because you've been pushing too hard. It starts to give you more of the picture, more of the answer. But if we shut down our mind, if we shut down our thoughts on our body and we say, shut up, I don't want to listen to you. You have nothing of value to say. You're always saying you, you're hurting and nobody wants to hear that anymore. You know, and I'm going to take some Advil so that you be quiet already. Would you just be quiet and let me do what I need to do? When you do that, it becomes a bigger and bigger and bigger problem and your stress gets worse. But when you actually have a conversation with it and you let it say what it needs to say, whatever thoughts come up into your mind, whatever they are, you know, and you, and you start saying, hey, thanks for telling me. I really appreciate it. If you give it a little bit of time, then eventually it tells you what's really going on. It's, it gets past the I'm broken. It gets past the you betrayed me. It gets past all that emotional stuff. That's just at the beginning. And it gets to the real meat of it is, yeah, you didn't stand up for yourself. Or, um, yeah, you were too tired to, you know, you let me get too tired so that I couldn't uh, do what needed to be done. It starts to tell you what's really going on and the stress dials down. And once you know what's going on, then your brain can come back into play. And it can start to make good decisions and say, oh, really? I didn't know you were dehydrated. Well, let's drink some water. All right, then. Thanks for telling me. The issue is, is that it takes a long time. We want a quick fix where we take a pill, where we you know, do something else, and we feel better immediately. And I totally get that. But that is a short-term fix that will only make you more stressed out in the long run. But you can still do a short-term fix. You can still do those 10, 15 minutes a little bit when you're sitting in the bathroom, when you're standing in line at the grocery store, when you know you want to be Facebooking to distract yourself. If you take those five or 10 minutes to listen to what your body has to say, it dials that down. That's a form of meditation. Being present to what you feel is a form of meditation. All you have to do is listen to it. And just like, you know, all of your friends, I'm sure, who come to you, who want to talk to you and tell you all of their problems, once they tell you everything that's going on, they feel better, you can do the same thing for yourself. I mean, I don't go to a lot of people because, you know, they've got lives. They've got their own problems. One of the reasons I see a psychologist every week. <laughs> but the best way to do it is to be the parent, be the listener, be the friend to you. You know, take that time that you might spend trying to power through and make things harder for yourself. Instead, take that time and, and be a friend to your body. You know, listen to it, uh, ask it what it thinks, what it feels, what it wants, 
And honestly, if I could have told my junior high self that while I was crying all the time, constantly stressed out, and my body was breaking down, sick to my stomach, all of that, if I could have told myself then, look, all you have to do is listen to you. You don't have to do anything else. Just listen to what your body has to say without any judgment, without any, I can't believe you feel that way or what's wrong with you or I shouldn't feel that way or oh, I did it again and it's all my fault. Without any of that, just with an open heart and an open mind, even if it says the same thing over and over and over for 45 minutes, oh my God. Even if it does that, trust me, it dials down your stress. And then when your stress is dialed down, you can get back on track. Not only get back on track, but start to thrive and move in the direction you want to move. Taking those few minutes every day or several times a day to listen to what your body's saying to you no matter what it says. Even if it's something that's ludicrous. Even if that's something that melodramatic and over the top. Don't believe it. Care about it. But don't believe it. Know that keep, that, keep that parent in you that says, hey, thank you for telling me how you feel. I know it's hard. I really appreciate it. When you do that, you will start to feel better and get back on track. I swear to you, you will, honestly. So, okay, no matter where you're seeing this, email, YouTube, Facebook, if you could please leave a comment below of something that you liked or loved or send a little bit of love or a topic you'd like to see, I would be more than happy to do a live stream on that. I'm so glad you're part of this tribe because just by showing up, we start to rewire our thoughts. We start to rewire how we look at the world and engage with the world because we are very impacted and influenced by the words that we hear, by our environment, more than anything else. So let's set up a loving, nurturing environment for ourselves, and that's what these live streams are about. Creating a community of women who want to change the world and want to feel better in ways that are actually natural and normal and human and don't require you to be superhuman again. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. She uses this advice in her yoga classes to listen to your body without judgment. Absolutely. That's the way to do it. Without the judgment means that it can finally be heard, and when it's finally heard, it can relieve and flush out and detox that stress, and you end up feeling better just by doing that. So that's it for today. I will see you again tomorrow on some great topic about stress, and um, please leave a comment below, and have a great day. Bye.